Hi there, I'm Brian. I'm a TF for STAT 110, and this is a visual explanation for universality of the uniform, which is a key concept that Professor Joe Bergstein's introduced in the lecture. Um, universality of the uniform is about how you get from the uniform distribution to other distributions, and also you can get from other distributions back to the uniform distribution. Um, but before we go into the details, uh, we're going to first talk about functions and inverses of functions a little bit. So here is a diagram of the function uh, f of x. And so we're going to real briefly talk about what it means um, visually to see what a function is and also what an inverse function is. So here, um, let's take an example. And the example will be asking what is um, f of x when x is, let's say, 2.1. Okay. So visually, the way we get that is we start at the point 2.1 on the x-axis. We draw a vertical line until it intersects our graph. And then from that point, we draw a horizontal line to get to uh, the y-axis. And what we will see is that f of 2.1, if we do this very precisely, is equal to 4.4. One, okay. On the other hand, if we wanted to find an inverse function, let's say f inverse of 6.25, uh, we would go in the reverse direction. So we would start at the point 6.25 on the y-axis, we draw a straight line across until it hits the graph, and then draw a straight line down. So we would see in this case that f inverse of 6.25 is 2.5. So that's real briefly how functions and inverse functions work. So now let's talk about universality of the uniform. Okay, so here's our first picture. Um, this is a distribution which is Uniform 1.3, 1.9. So blue here is showing the, the PDF. It's uniform from 1.3 to 1.9. And then green is showing the CDF. It's 0 here, 1 here, and it increases linearly in between. Um, so I'm going to first talk about the first version of universality of the uniform. And then later, um, at the very end, we'll talk about the second version. Um, but, but the first version says it's all concerned about how you would simulate from a um, from a distribution uh, from another distribution by simulating from the uniform. So in this case, we want to simulate points between 1.3 and 1.9. So what universality of the uniform says is one way to do that is you can simulate um, u, where u is uniform 0, 1, and to each of those points apply the inverse CDF of that dis of that distribution, and then you will get the distribution you desire. So in this case, we start by simulating points from 0 to 1. So these are my points right here, um, 10 random data points from 0 to 1. Then I, um, to get f inverse of each of these points, the operation as we discussed earlier is we would draw lines going across until they hit the graph and then draw lines coming down. So now, these points right here, um, we got them by starting from a uniform, applying f, f inverse to each of them, and now you can see that they are distributed according to uniform 1.3, 1.9, which is what we wanted. So that's our first example. Here's our second example. This is a what's called a beta distribution, and um, if you're watching this before the midterm, uh, Joe hasn't introduced beta distribution yet, but it will be coming soon. Um, the most important thing in this case is that it's a distribution that takes values between 0 and 1. Once again, blue is the PDF and green is the CDF. And um, it takes these two parameters, um, but all you need to know, or the important thing about this example is that it's bunched up more towards the left than towards the right. It's, it's left skewed. And so, now, once again, we want to simulate from this beta distribution. So what we do is we produce 10 random data points from the uniform, 0, 1. 
draw lines across until they hit our CDF, and then drop lines down, and then we get these data points. So I want to point out one thing about this example, which is that the data points that we get uh, end up being more clustered to the left than to the right. As you can see, 0 0.5 is right here, and we have nine data points to the left of that, and only one to the right. So that's consistent with our PDF, which is more left skewed. Um, but why is it consistent with this other, other interpretation of um, F inverse of U? So what we can see here is that because the PDF is more left skewed, the CDF will increase more rapidly in the first half so, than in the second half. So if you see that this is the halfway point, 0 0.5, we see that the CDF has already increased dramatically up to that point. And then it only has a small way to go before um, reaching, reaching one right there. And so what that means is that if we simulated from uniform 0, 1 and then drew lines across, it's more likely to hit the CDF uh, in a region that will correspond to being at the left side of this distribution than in the right side. And so that's because the CDF is increasing rapidly because it's the integral of the PDF which is more bunched up on this side. So that's the takeaway from this example. Uh, and then one final example is normal, uh, the normal distribution. So whereas the beta and the uniform that we considered in the first two examples both have limited uh, a finite support, the normal distribution has infinite support. So even though here we're looking between 0 and 6, you can see that here it still hasn't gone to 0 it would actually keep extending on. And similarly, the CDF, even though it looks like it's reached one here, we know that actually it only asymptotically reaches one, and we need to keep going out. Um, and so once again, if we want to simulate from the normal 3, 1, we would simulate from uniform 0, 1, draw lines across, and then draw lines down. And so now these data points right here are simulated according to normal 3, 1. And some points to know about this, um, to note about this. Uh, first is that um, we want the data points seem to be more clustered near the center than towards the outside. And that's consistent with how the normal distribution behaves. And the way you can see that from the CDF interpretation is that because the normal is more um, bunched up near the center, the CDF is increasing slowly here increasing ma rapidly in the middle, and then increasing more slowly towards the ends. So that means that there is more of a vertical, well, um, because it's increasing more quickly here, you have this, you have this whole region on the y-axis, which would correspond to this region over here. Whereas um, here, where it's increasing more slowly, um, to get into this big region of x, you really need to hit that small region in Y. And so that's an interpretation for why, in this case, uh, everything is more bunched up near the center if you use this, this interpretation. Uh, another thing that I just want to note is that um, using this method, you can simulate over the entire support of the normal distribution. Because even though here our graph ends at 6, you could get values beyond 6 if only this data point that you got from uniform 0, 1 was just a bit just like very, very high, very close to 1, you can get anything out infinitely far, and similarly in the other direction. Okay, so those were three examples illustrating the first um, statement of universality of the uniform. And actually the second, um, the second statement is, uh, I would consider even simpler, and so we're going to use the exact same three graphs for that. Uh, what it says is that if you have data, which is distributed according to a distribution, and you plug it into its own CDF, then you'll get data that's distributed according to the uniform. So this is the same graph that I showed earlier. In this case, um, the interpretation is that we start with data that are drawn from the uniform 1.3, 1.9 distribution. Then we take each of these and we plug them into its own CDF and get corresponding data points here. And what this statement is saying is that these are distributed according to uniform 0, 1. So this is basically just exactly an inverse statement of the previous part. The second example here, we start with data that are uh, drawn from a beta 2, 5. So they're more clustered towards the left than to the right. 
Using each one of these, we apply the CDF, and we get a corresponding data point on the y-axis. And the statement is that if these were beta 2,5, then these, and we plug it into the beta 2,5 CDF, then these would be from the uniform 0, 1 CDF. And finally, with the normal distribution, if we start with data from normal 3, 1, and we plug it into the normal 3, 1 CDF, then the resulting data will be from the uniform 0, 1 CDF. So we've covered um, universality of the uniform with three examples, both in the first formulation, which is starting from uniform and getting to your desired distribution, and also the second formulation, which is starting from your desired distribution, or an arbitrary distribution, and then getting data that, that is from the uniform 0, 1 distribution.